What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How's it going? It's Dan here from Cryo Noir. I'm here with another GIMP tutorial. Uh, I'm here with this particular tutorial because I found that GIMP tutorials seem to do quite well on this channel. And also, um, there's no devlog this week because uh, a lot of the work that me and Josh have been doing now uh, is not finished to the state that we can show you. So this is just some extra little content for you, uh, just to give you a little bit of fill of, uh, of Cryo Noir for the week. So here we are. So this is a tutorial um, on basically uh, the different formats of which you can export individual files and uh, this is basically aimed at people who use it for sprite work for video games um, so if you don't do that this might not be of a huge amount of use to you but nevertheless you might still get something out of it or maybe you just want to hang around for my amazing personality so here we go right in uh, an animation uh, tutorial, which I did previously, um, this is a little dude from a game that me and Josh are making, um, which is going to be awesome. Check out the devlog and you'll be able to see how cool it's going to be and you'll be amazed. Um, but anyway, so this is a little dude and we have our little frames of animation here for him. Uh, and I was showing in the animation video that uh, when you animate in GIMP, it wants you to fill in every single frame completely so that that way it can then run them because the animation actually plays it frame by frame. So it then does it like that. And if you don't have the frames complete, then you end up with a, a weird blurring effect and it doesn't look right. So you've now got to the stage where you have this right now what i'm going to do i'm just going to quickly fill these in uh gimp um is a very very good program for a lot of things animation not necessarily one of them but it is very good for making sprites and assets for games so part of that is you need to animate them now so this is our final final individual frames of the game okay so once you've got these, you're like, right, I need to import these into the game engine that I'm using. Um, okay, so the way you would do that is you go to File, and then you would go to uh, Export As, which is there, and you click on that, and then there we go. And it's helpful to have these as some sort of um, frame number. Uh, these are the walk animation. It's called SBR because that's a, a game maker convention um, that you'd label sprites as SBR and objects as OBJ and other things like that. It's the player, it's the walk animation, and this is frame. It's actually frame one, the first frame, but again, in computer language, it's count from zero upwards. So the first frame is zero, then the second frame is one, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, we are going to go somewhere else for this, just so I can show you, right? Okay, so when you would export these, okay, you've got lots of different options that you can do, which is the dot, in this case, PNG. Now, the most common file types that people export things as or find things are, um, with regards to still images, are JPEGs and PNGs. Now, I'm just going to talk to you quickly about the sort of the differences. Okay. Now, first of all, a JPEG um, is a compressed image, and it's not hugely compressed, but it is quite compressed, and that enables to save file space. But the it, it basically exports the image as it is. So. If we were to export this now as a JPEG, which is what we're going to do, it will bring up this little window and it will say, you can see SBR 0 point JPEG, and you go, quality 100%, why would you want less? So there we go, and there's lots of other things you can do, advanced options, but I never go anywhere near those for fear of messing things up. So we're now going to export that frame, and there we go, that was that one done, and then you would do that again for the next one. Oh no. Yeah, we want that one, so we're going to export that one now. Export as, and it will save all the things. You can see that that's there. We do now need to change that to frame one as JPEG, and there we go. It's already down as a JPEG. It's in the right place. Export, 100%. It's remembered that. Export, boom, very quick. And then we would do that for all of these individual frames. And then you would end up with a full list of sprites that would look something not too dissimilar to... Let's try and, uh, where are we? Sorry, not too dissimilar to this. And you can see them all there. This is another, the animation tutorial. I've not yet done this one yet. But they would end up looking like this. These are all PNGs. Ignore that. This is what you would end up seeing. So, you would then import them into your game engine, which I have here. We use GameMaker. And you can see we've imported them in there. Now, I, I'm not going to do a tutorial as to how you import them. It's very straightforward. You... 
Uh, in fact, so when I say I'm not doing it, I am just going to do it. You would literally just go loads. You would click on a new sprite, load sprite, bang, grab whatever it was you were loading from wherever it is on your hard drive. Okay, fairly straightforward. So in this one, I've already uh, taken the uh, taken the time to do this already. So we have his walk animation here, and uh, we can go edit sprite so we can see them. I'll zoom them in, and there you go. There, these are the sprites. And these are all full frame JPEGs. Oh, that one's kind of missing something there, but never mind. Anyway, so these are all full frame JPEGs. Now, for those of you who don't know what the problem here is, I'm going to show you what the problem is uh, while it loads up. And I'll just use this time to hum a ditty. Dum -be -dum -be -dum -dum -dum. And there we go. And do you see the problem? Do you see it? Yeah, the, the the main character has a white box around him, and that is because we have exported them as individual pictures rather than as um okay that didn't make sense because they're all individual pictures. That's because we've exported them as JPEGs. And the problem with a JPEG is it does not understand uh transparency. It doesn't have a transparency thing at all. So as far as it's concerned, it's a like think of it this way, it's a white sheet of paper with a picture on it. So it exports everything including the white sheet of paper. And this obviously does not look good within a game engine. Unless this is, you know, unless this <laughs> unless this, this is the aesthetic you're going for, it doesn't really look very good. Um, as you can see, we end up with uh, a square running around and there's not very many many games where you just play as a square. There are some, but not a huge amount, and that's not really what most people go for. So what you would need to do to try and fix this is you've got your images. Now you've had to color the whole frame in so that that way you can see that it animates correctly in GIMP. So, but that's no good for this. So what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of all of these, this white area. Now. The best way to do this is using this doohickey here, which is like a little wandy type thing. And you click, you click the wand, and then you click on the screen, and you'll see that it does like a weird dotted outline around everything. And in fact, I'm just going to hide. Oh no, they already are hidden. That's fine. So it does that. And now what you would do is you would hold Control and press X, which is cut, as we all know. Boom. And there we go, and you end up with this weird checkerboard background, okay? And you would then go to select and select none. Now what that's done is that's now then created a uh, transparency behind the character. So there we go, you see? And that's why when we click that, the whole thing goes white because it's then putting a piece of paper, a full square white piece of paper over the top. So again, we do the same thing on this one. And we go click and then control X and that gets rid of that and then we'll just keep doing that and you can already sort of see how this is going to cause issues when you're trying to animate in GIMP and that's because GIMP just runs through the different layers for the animation so now we'll select zero select to none and there we go and you can see how messy it all looks now we can like change these and you can't really see any changes going on because of the transparency going on so when i click here boom it just looks as though he kind of moves up whereas we know that if we take that one away you can see suddenly he's actually he's fully off the ground there but because of the uh, because it's doing the transparency and you've got two layers on top of each other it then blurs it all into one big horrible mush so you can now have these these things here now. You may find that it won't let you do that uh, on some images, depending, say, for instance, you've got images off the internet, if you've got JPEGs off the internet, and you've then brought them into GIMP to start messing around with them, and you want this alpha, you want this um, them to have the transparency. So the way you would do that, if it won't let you, or, or if you do it and it just goes white rather than this checkerboard background, okay, you right-click on there, and you can go... You see, this says remove alpha channel because it's already got one. But what you would click is add alpha channel there, down at the bottom. Can you see where I'm wiggling? Doing a wiggle down there. Add alpha channel. Click that. And that will then give this layer the ability to have transparency on it. So you do that, then remove all of the, the bits you didn't want, and they will become see-through. And then you're, you're kind of good to go. So now what we would do is we would then go to export each of these frames exactly as we did before. But the only difference is 
when we go to export, rather than JPEG, we would then go to, oops, I don't know what I did there, done something, but anyway, uh, what we would do, we keep everything the same, but we would go select file type down here at the bottom by extension, and if you scroll down, you will see somewhere PNG, PNG, there we go, and that's what you want, PNG image, there. So you would select that and you can see it changes the extension at the end and you got export and are we going to the right place? Yes we are, right, so you got export and it comes up with a different dialog box here. Again, I don't know what any of this means, you can probably leave all of it alone. Click export and it will do that as well and you could do that for each individual frame, hide a frame, show a frame, because don't forget with the transparency if you try and do it, it will do all of it. So just hide the frame, just have the only bit showing that you want, and then same again, file, export as. Uh, it's already saved it as a PNG, you can see there, so you would then just rename this to whatever frame number it is, or it's frame number two. We'll call this one zero, because I'm not actually going to use these. And then go export, export, bang, and away you go. And then when you go into your file list, not animation, PNG, you'll see they're in there. So now we have JPEGs and PNGs. Um, and that will allow you for transparency. So I'm now going to go into Game Maker and I would bring them in exactly the same way. Um, I'm now going to do a clever transition while I get rid of all of this whiteness. Okay, so as you can see, we have now got all of these sprites that are now, they have this alpha channel in the background, this transparency. You can tell that by the fact that it has the checkerboard background and that the, the, force, the, the sprite is moving independently of that background. Uh, it looks a bit weird for your eyes, but you can see that. And every single frame now is an individual frame and they all have... Um, as I said, a, a transparent background on them. So now, when we play the game, and it finally loads up, it shouldn't take too long. Boop. You now see that he is a groovy little dude on his own, without any, uh, without anything going on at all whatsoever. No, no box around him. So that is the difference between jpegs and pngs and for certainly working on game development you need to be exporting all of your individual sprites as a png rather than a jpeg so there you go i hope you enjoyed uh, this very very quick little tutorial um do you know it's uh, a lot of people will already know this and know the difference between the two but certainly if you're new to you know game making or you're new to gimp you may very well not have known these two different things and if you did not how to do them so it's always best to you know try and uh, just cover the very basics um so there we go thank you very much um i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and yes uh, check out our devlogs for the game that you can see before you right now um it's a little running dude he does have a gun um which you can't see yet because this is a very early a slightly earlier build of it uh, it's a, a procedurally generated game um we're hoping to have this out fairly soon um so yeah so check out the other uh, check out my other tutorials check out my other content please hit the subscribe button and i hope to see you next time take it easy bye bye